Brothers and sisters, anyone says that Shias don't believe in the Sahaba, doesn't understand Shiaism. This would be just half truth. We believe in the Sahaba, we honor them, we respect them, but we don't believe all of them were Adil. We scrutinize the life and biography and actions of each one of them. So he says Sahaba, they have a state of soul that they don't commit sins, they don't commit major and minor sins, and even whatever is against dignity. So this is very close to the concept of Isma that we have. For As Sahaba to Udul. Nah. Yani an Sahaba Tathbut Lahum Bishaklin Tilka Al Adala. Nah. Wa ma'an al Adala, let it shut في رواة الحديث حتى الحديث حتى يكون الحديث مقبولا قالوا انها هي لما عرفوها ايه معنى العداله قالوا هي يعني ملكه في النفس او قدره او قوه في النفس تمنع من الوقوع في الاثم او في الحرام نعم يعني تلاقي واحد عنده قدره على ان يعني يتقزز من الحرام ولا يفعله نعم بل قالوا انها ايضا تمنع من المباحات الحلال التي تخل بالمروءة احيانا نعم ده المهم بمعنى ان مثلا الاكل في الشارع لو واحد ماشي وبياكل سندوتش في الشارع اني بيليف فور اهل البيت هاف اسم ابي دي اكيوزز اوف اكزاجيريشن اباوت ذيم بس ذا واي ذات دي ديبيك الصحابه the isma for the idala for sahaba it is very close to the concept of isma that we have but they expanded to thousands of people who just had a time chance to meet the prophet even for a short while and so now we have two different perspectives here the shi'i perspective and the sunni perspective about the status of the sahaba the best thing is to go to the quran and see which of these two views are in line with the teachings of the quran And tonight I'll give you only three examples from the Quran. Number one, when you talk about Sahaba with those who had seen the Prophet even once, even if they had not narrated anything from him, they did not hear anything from him, they did not the jihad with him, you know, as long as they say, you know, they died as Muslims, you know, they are Sahabi, can we say that all those who were around Rasulullah in Medina, they were all pure believers. What about the issue of Munafiqeen? What about the hypocrites? And in Medina I'm talking about. And I'll give you just only one ayat from Surah Tawbah, Surah number 9, ayat 101. Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمِمَّنْ حَوْلَكُمْ مِنَ الْعَرَابِ مُنَافِقُونَ He says, remember, those who are around you, around, uh, around the city of Medina in the desert, Al-A'rab means the Bedouins. So they are among you the Bedouins. Among them they are Munafiqun. They are hypocrites among them. Not only outside Medina. وَمِنْ أَهْلِ Medina. Even the people of Medina among them they are Munafiqun. Maradu عَلَى nifaq. They are steeped in hypocrisy. لَا تَعْلَمُهُمْ O Muhammad you don't know them. نَحْنُ نَعْلَمُهُمْ Allah says we know them. وَنُعَذِّبُهُمْ مَرَّتَيْنْ ثُمَّ يُرَدُّونَ إِلَىٰ عَظَابٍ عَظِيمٍ We will punish them twice and then we will, you know, consign them to a great punishment. This Surah Tawbah was not revealed during the early days. This was revealed just about two and a half years before the demise of the Prophet in the ninth year. And so this is a later surahs. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that they are munafiqeen in the desert among the Bedouins as well as they are munafiqeen min ahlil madina. And so don't tell me that anyone who saw Rasulullah and has this title of Sahabi automatically becomes pure an example for us. No, they were also munafiqeen inside Medina who are known as the Sahaba. The second example is the issue of the Fasiqeen. Fasiq means a sinful person. A person who openly commits sin. And a Fasiq is opposite of Adil. And our contention here is that we do not believe that the Sahaba, just because of being a Sahabi, is an Adil. No, it's not automatically, you know, um, 
quality acquired by being in the companionship of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And for this I will go to surah, num uh, surah number 32, Surah to sajda Ayat 18. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَمَنْ كَانَ مُؤْمِنًا كَمَنْ كَانَ فَاسِقًا لَا يَسْتَبُونَ Is someone who is faithful, mu'min, can he be like someone who is transgressor, who is a sinful, fasiq? لا يستبون. They are not equal. They are not on the same level. Suyuti so in his, uh, is a Sunni scholar, in his Tafsir at durul Manthur has many, many narrations where he says that this ayat was revealed when a Sahabi by the name of Walid bin Uqba bin Abi Mu'id, a foster brother of Uthman, was bragging about himself against Amir al-Mu'minin Ali bin Abi Talib alayhi salatu wasalam. And according to Suyuti, the words Mu'min in this ayat refers to Ali alayhi salam, and the words Fasiq in this ayat refers to Walid bin Uqba. Now this is not the only ayat which, uh, which describes Walid bin Uqba as Fasiq. You can go to Surah number 49, Ayat 6, Surah Al-Hujarat. There also you will see, and that ayat was revealed in the context when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam appointed Walid bin Uqba as one of the revenue min, uh, officers, you know, to go as zakat collectors. And he was sent to a tribe outside Medina to go and collect zakat from them. Now the problem was that when Walid bin Uqba went to that uh, area where this uh, tribe lived, before Islam there was a dispute between that tribe and Walid bin Uqba. And so when they found out that Rasulullah is sending him as a zakat collector, although he was our enemy in the past, they as a gesture of goodwill decided to come out in large number from their uh, dwellings to welcome Walid, Walid bin Uqba. Walid bin Uqba, when he saw them from far, he thought that because of our past animosity and dispute, maybe they have come here to attack me. So he doesn't even go to them, he just turns around from that area, goes to Medina, goes to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he says, that this tribe refused to pay zakat. Now, this is a very serious accusation. If a messenger is coming from Rasulullah and you as a Muslim refuse to pay zakat, it is as if like you are becoming a murtab in, in, a, in a way, not technically, but you are rebelling against Rasulullah. And Rasul, if he, if he had taken this seriously, he could even have sent an army, you know, to punish that tribe. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this ayat, Ya ayuhalladheena amanu, in ja'akum fasiqun binaba'in fatabayyanu, O you who believe, when a fasiq, a sinful person comes to you with a news, do not just accept it. Tabayyanu. Fatabayyanu means investigate about it. Get it verified before you act on it. Because if you act in this false report, you might harm a community unknowingly and then you will regret later on. And so we see that in two places, Walid bin Uqba, a sahabi, who was also a zakat character, in the administration of Rasulullah is being described as a fasiq and a fasiq cannot be adil and so this is one very clear example that according to Quran a sahabi can be adil or can be fasiq there is no automatic you know growth of this quality of uh, adalat when a person becomes a sahabi of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam let me give Third example, the last one for tonight, that among the Sahaba there were many who actually made wrong choices. Every Friday, once a week, Muslims for centuries are being reminded of the wrong priorities and wrong choices made by the Sahaba when they preferred entertainment and business over Jummah prayers. If you go to Jummah prayers and if the Imam is reciting Surah Al Jummah, you will see the af after the ayat which says, when the call is made for the uh, Friday prayer, you know, leave your own your business and trade and go for Salat. And 
Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the last ayat there says, when they see, referring to a specific event about the Sahaba, that when they see business and entertainment, they run towards it. وَتَرَكُوكَ قَائِمًا And O Muhammad, they left you standing on the member of Jumu'ah Khutbah. O Muhammad said to them, what Allah has is better than entertainment and the business that you are looking for. He is the best of providers. Again, Suyuti, in his Addur al munthur under this ayat of Surah Juma, just one narration here I'll quote to you, where Abdullah ibn Abbas says, وَتَرَكُوا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَعَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ قَائِمًا عَلَى الْمِنْبَرِ When the khutbah was going on, Juma khutbah of Rasulullah, a trade caravan came into the city. And when they come in, they announced their arrival by beating the drums. So when the sound of the drums came into the masjid, majority of the Sahaba, while he was sitting on the member delivering the Friday khutbah, وَبَقِيَ فِي الْمَسْجِدِ إثنا عَشَرَ رَجُلًا وَسَبْعَ نِسْوَ And the only people left in the masjid were 12 men and 9 women. The rest had gone. فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهُ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَعَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمُ At that moment Rasulullah said, وَلَوْ خَرَجُوا كُلُّهُمْ if all of these people had left me alone here, لَاسْتَرَمَ الْمَسْجِدَ عَلَيْهُمْ نَارًا This masjid would have actually shot fire towards them. Azab would have descended upon them in Medina. So these three examples from the Qur'an are sufficient to show that this idea of automatic adalat for the companions is not supported by the Qur'an. And so we don't, you know, agree with this blanket glorification of the Sahaba just because they were Sahaba of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so we do not believe that, you know, just by looking at the Prophet, you know, there was a telepathic transformation taking place among the thousands of Sahaba and they automatically become Adil. No. We believe that Sahaba were just like other Muslims who came later on. All the rules of Islam equally applied upon them when it came to wajibat and muharramat. All the obligations and prohibi prohibitions were applicable on them. All the laws of crime and punishment were equally ap applicable on them. And therefore, from the Shi'i point of view, when it comes to the Sahaba, we believe that we should study each Sahabi's life and actions individually. And for example, if we see that a Sahabi was steadfast in, in his Aqeedah, upright in his character, then no doubt such a Sahabi will be a role model for us. We will salute such Sahaba try to emulate their example. You know, the companions like Salman al-Farsi, Abu Dhar al-Ghifari, Ammar bin Yasir, Miqdad bin Aswad, and many, many other men. Among women, Umm Salama, Asma bint Umais, Safiya bint Abdul Muttalib, Fatima bint Asad, all these are the Sahabiyat who are role model and examples for us. But when we study the lives of the Sahaba, and if we see that they were not steadfast in their aqidah, not upright in their character, then they are definitely not role models for us. We do not have to salute them. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad.